Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. I am part of March Madness with Blatantly Bookish and Nargle Catchers. I will link both of their channels down below. And what we are doing is we are trying to spread awareness and kind of chat about mental health and mental illness and kind of lessen the stigma, which you guys know is kind of a, a passion of mine anyway. It's something that I try and do on this channel quite frequently. But this month we're going to try and push it up a little notch or two. <laughs> I already did one video talking about that and I will link it down below. Um, I will also link down below the videos that both of the girls did in um, their announcements. So today I just wanted to talk to you guys about things that affect the psyche or the, the psychology of a person. Um, these are all books that have mentally ill characters in them that are affected by things that we ourselves are affected by but on a lesser scale sometimes. Um, and I just want to dive right in. So the first thing that I really want to talk about is eating and health and the food that we put into our bodies. Now, I know I may not be the best person to take advice from because I am heavier, and I admit that thoroughly, um, and I have struggled with eating disorders all of my life since about the age of eight. Um, if you guys are curious about that, I'll link my video down below talking about the truth about my eating disorder. But this book talks about a uh, disorder called pica, which is the act of eating an item um, that has no food value. So in this case, this is White is for Witching by Helen Oyami, and she eats chalk from the Cliffs of Dover. So one of the things that I have come to realize over my time in therapy and my experience in the mental health field, as far as talking to people with mental illness and talking to people with mental health issues, is that Food is a really, really important thing and what we put into our bodies and how much we eat and how much we don't, you know, deprive ourselves of food is a very, very big thing um, as far as how our psyche responds. With, with hunger comes some very, very strong responses from the body um, and with overeating comes the same. So this story talks a lot about things from a magical realism perspective. However, for me, one of the things that I love about magical realism is it's very easy to describe it and then see it as a mental health issue. Not all magical realism does this, but a lot of the more current magical realism tends to do this, where you could really argue that it's a person with a mental illness or a mental health issue that is seeing the world in a different type of way way. So in this story you are hearing from the young girl Miranda and her perspective as well as the perspective of her brother, her father, and her house. Now her mother has disappeared and she is grieving her mother and she is also trying to come to terms with her life and she is not eating properly and not taking care of her own body and so some of the things that happen in this house that could be chalked up to magical realism could also be chalked up to a lack of sanity and a lack of caring for oneself. I think that that's a really interesting way to go about magical realism is to try and see what is off about the person that you're reading about and what they could be doing for self-care that could change their reality. So in this case, eating. Now, the next one is Planet Fall. Now, uh, this talks about the ideas of cults and living in the, like, out in outer space. It's a sci-fi. Very clearly science fiction, very clearly has to do with an alternative type of living. But it does talk a lot about anxiety and the feeling of lies and the feeling of, um deep seated secrets and trying to discover your truths and trying to understand something bigger than yourself. There is such a huge component to mental health where people sometimes look outside of themselves for an explanation as to why their brain may be the way it is. And as much as I really envy those people who can find something outside themselves and find a stronger being or um, idea that can help them understand. Some people cannot find that. Some people find that that actually causes more anxiety within themselves than others. Um, so in this case, I really found that the anxiety that was really, really plaguing the main character is based around the fact that they really weren't able to find their 
overall answer, their end-all be-all answer, as well as they weren't able to maintain a sense of reality and a sense of honesty in their own being because they were trying to hold on to a secret for such a long time. That is all I'm going to say on this book, but I think that that is really something that can affect your mental health in general. Insomnia. Let's talk about Insomnia. This is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. Now, while I really, really did like this book initially when I first read it, I have come to this point where I'm a little bit frustrated by it. And the reason I'm frustrated by it is because I saw it as a very abusive story about a person with mental illness. I saw it as something where, and maybe this is the a cultural difference, I I don't know. The woman in this story who becomes a vegetarian becomes a vegetarian due to the fact that she is having these dreams and these really dark ideas and these dark fantasies. And I can tell you probably from experience, more likely than not, that has slowed her sleeping or at least stopped her sleeping, which can cause insomnia, which insomnia can cause such drastic troubles for a person's psyche that it's insane. Now, Instead of dealing with the insomnia and instead of dealing with that pain, the people in her life decided to deal with the vegetarianism and her being a bad woman and they chalked it up to a character flaw, which is very commonly happens to people with mental illness is their experience is a flaw in their character, not a flaw in the system. Mm, that's a whole other ball game. But I really think that in this story, there is such a bold statement about what insomnia can do to a person and how it can change their reality and how it can change their grasp on um, sense of self and sense of being and sense of right and wrong. I think this is a really good explanation of why sleep is important and how much that is a big part of self-care. All right. I'll get to that one last because that one's a little different. So this one is more environmental and trauma-based. This is Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down by Anne Valenti. Now, I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I think it's incredible. One of the things about this that I found so incredible is the experience of the children that do see a mass shooting occur at their school and how much the trauma that they go through is demonstrated throughout the entire book and it's not just left as a afterthought. I think that for me one thing that really sometimes gets forgotten trauma can change an entire person's being core and all. It can change a person's entire psyche and um thought process and how they function in the world. Sometimes the people that are supposed to be there to support those who have been traumatized can sometimes forget that the changes that have occurred within their loved ones are not due to the fact that the person is losing their mind. It's more so due to the fact that the person has lost their sense of safety in their world, their sense of reality, their sense of just, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, their sense of right and wrong has been challenged. Their sense of sanity has been taken away. There's such a strong pain that comes with trauma occurring in your life that really can change a person's entire attitude in how they relate to the world. And I think that that sometimes is just such a big part of a person's mental health that we forget that that actually affects everything. And the trauma does not have to be big. The trauma can be small. It can be something as insignificant as, you know, seeing someone, you know, Actually, no, there is no such thing as an insignificant trauma. But what can be happening is that a person can believe a trauma to be insignificant and therefore undermine the fact that it is a trauma. And I think that that is a really big issue for a lot of people is this idea that their trauma isn't as bad as someone else's and therefore they should not feel so bad. That happens a lot. I've heard that one several times, but it's, you know, at least da 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 didn't happen. Okay, at least da 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 didn't happen, but da 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 did happen, so it's still pretty bad. You can't compare your trauma to one another because when you do, it ends up becoming a competition and it ends up becoming a I'm I'm in a worse place and you're in a worse place. And it ends up coming into this people questioning their own reality and questioning their own feelings and emotions and that's really unfair and really unhelpful to society. 
So then the last but the not least is aging. Now, I don't believe that aging has to be a troublesome thing, but I do think that people who age can struggle and they can struggle greatly. So this is Idaho and it's by Emily Rushvik. Now, dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all of those are more commonly diagnosed in the time of aging. And those are things that change a person and their behavior and their memory and their idea of sanity and their idea of security. And it takes away a certain sense of reality from the person who is aging. And one of the things that I really, really find doesn't happen enough is understanding that the change that's coming within this person as they're aging due to their illness is not their fault. And I think that that sometimes gets forgotten, that a person aging can cause so much of a shift in their being due to the illnesses that they're suffering from, that we need to understand that they don't understand what's happening. They don't understand that they've changed. They don't understand what's wrong. They also are scared and terrified because they don't understand. And I think that that sometimes gets pushed aside. And I think that that's a huge thing. The idea of aging is so scary to anybody anyway that when you add on top of that this sense of not knowing your own identity, not knowing your own memories, not knowing your own existence and time and field of like exist like what's the word I'm looking for? Um, boundaries in in time and place. It's it's a really scary experience and it gets worse with age, not better. So a lot of people end up aging in a really scary way and I think that they need a lot more love, compassion, and understanding than what they receive now. So those are five books talking about mental illness and those are five little topics that kind of affect our general anxieties, our general existence, and our general psyche as we age, as we progress in life, and as we change. And those are just a few of the things that will affect us.